worship on this sixth Sunday after, the, after Easter. Um, welcome to those of you who are here in the building and those joining us online. It's good to be together as the body of Christ. Today we begin a three-week series or exploration of Paul's letter to the Philippians. Um, this church is one of the very first ones that Paul founded and that would have been sometime around the year 50 CE. And he has a special relationship with these folks. And that, I think, comes through in the letter. We hear his deep gratitude for them. So if you have some time this week, I do encourage you to read through this letter. It's not very long. It's only four chapters. Uh, it's a really beautiful letter to this community um, that Paul holds dear. Um, it talks about that partnership that we have in Christ, even across distance, how we can find uh, deep and abiding joy, even in times of struggle and suffering. And today, as we hear the introduction of this letter, we're reminded of the power of gratitude and how important it is, how powerful it is to let those around us know uh, when we're grateful for them and what it is that we're thankful for. One uh, worship note, uh, the choir, as you see, was singing today. Um, it's not in your worship guides, uh, but that will be after the prayer of the day in our order of service. I'll invite us now to take a moment of silence as we prepare ourselves for worship. As you are able, I invite you to rise in body and in spirit for our opening hymn.
shall overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help us determine what is best so that we may be pure and blameless in the sight of Jesus Christ. This we pray in his name. Amen.
Today's reading is coming from Philippines 1, verses 1 to 18a. Paul and Timothy, servants of Jesus Christ. To all the saints in Jesus Christ who are in Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among, among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about you, all of you, because of you hold me in your heart, for all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in my defense and my confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Jesus Christ. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that on the day of Jesus Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and the praise of God. I want you to know, beloved, that what has happened to me has actually helped to spread the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to everyone else that my imprisonment is for Christ and most of the brothers and sisters, having been made confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, dare to speak the word with greatest boldness and without fear. Some proclaim Christ from eerie and rarity, but others with goodwill. These proclaim Christ out of love, knowing that I have been here for the defense of the gospel. The others proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but intending to increase my suffering in my imprisonment. What does it matter? Just this, that Christ has proclaimed in every way, whether out of false motives or true, and in that I rejoice. Here ends the reading. Inspire our understanding, Spirit of God. So Paul is in prison, again, somewhere, it doesn't quite make that clear in this letter, but that was something that happened frequently for him as he traveled. Um, from prison, it's, I think, helpful to keep that in mind, that that's the context, that's where he is when he writes this letter to the church in Philippi. As I said, uh, this community that he founded, with whom he still feels a really deep sense of connection, who he misses very deeply, and in the introduction to this letter, which I think is so beautiful, he begins by expressing the gratitude that he feels for them, for the people, for the time that they spent together, for the good work they accomplished together, and for the good work that's continued to happen in that community since he's left them. And I think part of the reason it really struck me this week is that um, it seems like a lot of that maybe is lacking <laughs> this, this time and place after two years of pandemic. Um, I had to make a couple of phone calls this week, um, you know, where you get put on hold. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but it kind of seems anywhere, like whether it's a bank or something with the government, um, there's always a message reminding you to please be kind when you speak to someone, right? Um, and you know that there's a reason that they have to put that on there. So just a remind, reminder to me of how much that maybe is lacking at this stage when we're all feeling worn out and weary and angry and frustrated about the world, the state of things right now. Um, it's important to, to practice gratitude, I think for our own well-being, but it also is such a, a, an important way of encouraging and building up those around us. It goes a long way. So hearing Paul's words of, of gratitude and thankfulness, it encouraged me to take a book or page out of his book or letter. Um, and so I have another letter that I want to read for you this morning. I have it here. And it says, To all the saints in 
Christ Jesus who are in Broadhagen. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator and the Lord Jesus Christ. Every time I remember you, I thank my God. My prayers for you are prayers of joy because of your sharing in the gospel with me from the first day until now. I think back to my very first Sunday as your pastor in December of 2012, on the first Sunday in Advent. I don't know if you all remember that day, but I think Murray probably does because you were assisting that day. Um, it wasn't quite baptism by fire, but there were two baptisms and Holy Communion. And so we definitely hit the ground running in one of the busiest times of a church year. <laughs> Uh, and it never was lost on me then or now that you took a chance extending a call to a young, newly ordained pastor from the big city. Although I think the fact that I grew up in Saskatchewan scored me a few uh, rural points. And I know I took a chance moving from downtown Toronto to Broadhagen, a step of faith for all of us. But here we are nearly 10 years on and I think the spirit maybe knew what she was doing. As a new pastor, you provided a safe and welcoming place for me to learn and grow. And I'm still so grateful for the way that you continue um, to be open and willing to try new things, at least once. Like the narrative lectionary, hearing, um, learning new hymns and communion liturgies. Uh, Pre-COVID, when we would do our Monday, Thursday agape meal, or the couple of times we combined our annual meeting right with the worship service and did that in the basement. You care so well for this church, both the building and the ministry. And I can still remember uh, when I interviewed with the call committee being told that at St. Peter's, when a need is made known, people step up. And I've seen that in action more times than I can count. You step up, you show up, you model what it means to be servants of Christ. And so it's with joy when I recall all of the baptisms and confirmations and weddings I've been a part of here. I'm so excited to celebrate another confirmation in just two weeks with our current class of 11 confirmands. How amazing is that? And such an incredible group of young people. Of course, I've been privileged to celebrate the lives of so many of our faithful departed. And when I'm up here, if I close my eyes or imagine, I can still see them sitting in these pews with us. I know that their faith and love still lives on in each one of us. We've certainly been through a lot together, especially in these last two years of navigating a global pandemic. During this time, our church councils in particular had a lot on their shoulders. They had to make some really difficult decisions about when and how to gather, how to balance the need for connection with the need to do that safely. Um, you know, with people on all sides of things, it has been hard, it's been tiring, and we haven't always seen eye to eye. But the conversations have always been respectful and grace-filled, and there's never been any doubt that we are all in this together. I've heard it said about the church, what an odd assortment of people, but see how they love one another. And I don't really like the idea of calling us odd. I don't think we're odd. Uh, but we certainly are an assortment of, of different people, different ages and stages in life, different interests and points of view. But as I said, if the way we have navigated the pandemic is any indication, it's clear to me that you do indeed love one another. You witness to God's grace and love for all people, no matter their walk of life. This is a community that glorifies God by embodying that unconditional love God has for each one of us. And you do this in the way that you invite everyone to celebrate in Holy Communion at the Lord's table. For as we know, it's not a Lutheran table, it is the Lord's table. You do this in the way that you support and nurture the faith of our children and youth. 
in the way that you partner with organizations like ShelterLink, the Olive Branch, Youth Unlimited, the Angel Tree, to be Christ's hands and feet in the world. And it is right for me to think about you this way, about all of you, because I know that you hold me in your heart. You've accepted me as I am, and over the years you've shown your love for me in small ways and in big ways. And for that, I'm so grateful. I especially give thanks for the ways that you cared for and supported our family when we were dealing with a complicated pregnancy and James's very early arrival, for how kind and supportive you've been of me during this time of pandemic, which has been hard for all of us. Um, but you've been there, you've, you've been supportive and understanding as um, me, your pastor, has had to struggle balancing full-time pastoring, especially during those times of full-time parenting and online learning during lockdowns. So thank you. Thank you for trusting me, for cheering me on, for challenging me, and for being Christ to me. I know that you hold me in your heart, and I want you to know that I do every day hold you in mine. I am so grateful for you. I'm so grateful for the way the Spirit led me here all oh, 10 years ago, just about now. And this is my prayer for you, that your love might become even more and more rich with knowledge and all kinds of insight. I pray this so that you will be able to decide what really matters, especially when times get tough. May you be filled with the fruit of righteousness which comes from Jesus Christ in order to give glory and praise to God. Thanks be to God for you, for each one of you. And all glory be to God, who is our source and ground of being. From your sister in Christ, Pastor Laura. As you are able, I invite you to stand as we sing together our hymn of the day. Take some time now or later today to reach out and connect with someone. And those of us here in the building to stay in your place, but give a wave or a sign of peace to those around you.
come before God now in a spirit of thanksgiving. Um, as the words of our offering hymn invite, as you're comfortable, I also invite you to open your hands as we offer all that we have to Christ's service. to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. God of new life, open your church to the unexpected ways your spirit is at work. Guide church leaders in their visioning, partnership, and planning. Surround us with your peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give a vision of increase and abundant harvest for farmers, laborers, and gardeners who are beginning their growing season. Join their efforts with the goodness of creation to feed all living things. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shine your light of wisdom and peace among nations. When those in power seek to assert dominance over others, confound their ways and make them yield to your humble authority. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring your healing and peace to all who need it. Especially, we pray for Pastor Christine, Betty, and those we name before you now. Create places filled with hospitality, where hurting people find your loving presence and wholeness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uphold the work of ministries and organizations in our communities who assist people experiencing homelessness, citizens returning from prison, and all marginalized people. Accomplish your will through their efforts. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our siblings in Christ. For the people of the Free Reformed Church, Bornholm, and their pastor, John Frosey. For the people of Redeemer Lutheran Church in London, and their pastor, Catherine Gong. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those dear to us and those in our weekly St. Peter's prayer cycle. For Joey, Krista, Jamie, Paisley, and Thomas Glover. Jeff, Kelly, Austin, and Brianne Bauer. Al and Elaine Binning and Ryan Lay, and Joyce Seaman. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who Father, art in Amen. heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. We have Confirmation Sunday coming up uh, two weeks from today. I also want to draw your attention, though, to next week. Um, on May 29th at 7.30 p.m. in the evening, we will be having a confirmation faith statement uh, reception. So as I've done for, for many years now with the confirmation students, their final project is to write a statement of faith. And sometimes we've shared those in Sunday morning worship if it was a smaller group, but we have 11 confirmands this year, and so we will do that the Sunday before confirmation, and you are all invited to come out and support our confirmands that evening. Um, we'll be here in the sanctuary at 7.30 p.m. Uh, for a time to hear them share about their faith, what their faith means to them, um, what confirmation has meant to them, and how they plan to continue growing um, in their faith and living out their faith once they are confirmed. It's always a joy, I know, for me to, to hear and read these. And so, again, if you are available, I do strongly encourage you to come and support them that evening. In terms of upcoming um, events, then, I will just draw your attention to the worship guide for those who are worshiping at home. It's linked in the video description. Uh, we have you know, other things coming up in the next couple of months that are in your worship guide there. Um, we received in the mail this week some uh, brochures for Camp Lutheran. That is our um, Lutheran Bible Camp, Lutheran Summer Camp in Ontario. Um, it's a good distance from here at Golden Lake, uh, so that's uh, you know uh, closer up to Pembroke, Eakinville that way. But if you know someone who might be interested, and you know there are there are pamphlets, there are brochures that are in the narthex, and please grab one on your way out today. Are there any announcements from council or from the congregation? I don't see anyone jumping up, so I just want to take an opportunity, too, to wish you um, a, a safe and restful, hopefully long weekend. Um, enjoy yourselves, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll have a little bit warmer weather than what we have today, and we can enjoy that tomorrow. I invite you to please rise as you are able to receive God's blessing. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Let us sing together our sending hymn.
when peace tell what God